All right, you guys ready to get into 5.8? All right, so normally I would skip over a warm up because it's review from the night before um, or from the um, lesson before, but with these, I do think it's really important that you guys get that practice in. Um, so we are gonna do these. Um, I mean, you only had four problems for homework, so you can do four more. <laughs> um, so why don't we try this first one? So it's going to be the same thing as 5.7. You're trying to get this into a single term. So um, it would be awesome if you guys could pause the video and try this on your own first, just to get that practice in, because you need it. Um, but if you want to follow along, that's fine too. Okay, so um, right off the bat, I think I'm going to keep this cosine. But I am going to change this cosecant maybe into 1 over sine. And then I don't know if you guys remember one of the tricks I taught you, but anytime you see a trig squared and a 1, what is it going to be? A Pythagorean identity. So go to your Pythagorean identities and look for the one with secant squared. It's this one. But it doesn't look exactly like that. This doesn't say secant squared minus one. But can I manipulate this to make it that way? Sure can. I can subtract this one over to both sides. And now do I have secant squared minus one? Yes. And what is it equal to? Tangent squared. So what can I replace secant squared minus one with? Tangent squared. Okay. From here, there's so many things that you guys can do. You can focus on the tangent squared and substitute it with. Um, so since tan is sine over cosine, then tan squared would be sine squared over cosine squared. That would be fine. So that's one route. Or we could focus here, make that one fraction. And what is cosine over sine? cotan and what's cotan? One over tan. So does that mean that these two are equivalent? Yes. So there's so many different ways to do this. Cancel, cancel, and this is equal to tan. Okay. Number two, again, if you want to pause this and try it on your own, go for it. I see secant, I'm gonna change that into one over cos. I see cotan, I'm gonna change that into cos over sine. And automatically, what can we do? Boom, boom. All right, let's do this. Cotan is cos over sine, and this is times cos over one. No canceling here, but how do you multiply two fractions? How do you subtract two fractions? You need an LCD, which we have. If you see it, pause. Pause the video and go for it, you guys. Don't let me guide you. Don't let me um, do the problem for you. Pause it if you see something. Run with this. What can we do? Think about it. I just gave you the same tip in the previous problem. If we see a trig squared and a one, what can we use? Pythagorean identity. How do I manipulate this one to say one minus cosine squared? I want the one to be positive, right? This is a positive one, but the cosine's negative. So all we have to do is subtract cosine squared to both sides. And what do we have? One minus cos squared, and what is it equal to? Sine squared. So this whole numerator is sine squared and it's still divided by sine. What can we do? Simplify, cancel, we're left with just sine. Number three. All right, the first thing standing out to me is this guy. 
one minus sine squared. That's actually super similar to what we just did over here, the one minus cosine squared. So if we go to our Pythagorean identity sheet, and instead of subtracting the cosine squared over, because I want one minus sine squared, just subtract sine squared over. Boom, now we have one minus sine squared and what does that equal? Cosine squared. So numerator over that denominator became cosine squared. All right, let's get into the numerator now. Any thoughts, any ideas? Cotan is equal to cos over sine. So what is cotan squared equal to? Square both of those. It's cosine squared over sine squared. So that's just the numerator. I'm going to put this over one and then that whole thing is over cosine squared. You see anything you could do? Sine squareds cancel. So what's left in the numerator? Just cosine squared and it's divided by cosine squared. And what's cosine squared divided by itself? One, there's your single term. All right, last one. Again, think about the, the strategies. The tips and tricks I taught you. What do you see? I don't know if there's anything we can go in right away and replace. This is something that a lot of people want to do. They see the one minus sine. They want to replace it with cosine or cosine squared. But you guys, that's when it's sine squared. That's totally different. This is just sine, not squared. So I actually can't go in right away and replace stuff. Instead, let's think about algebra. I have two fractions being added together. What do I do? LCD. So this is a one plus sign. This is a one minus sign. So I'm gonna multiply each fraction by the other one's denominator. So this one's gonna get a one minus sign multiplied on top and bottom. And this one's gonna get a one plus sign multiplied by the top and the bottom. And then let me go ahead and rewrite this. And then since they now have the same denominator, we can put it all over that one denominator. All right, thoughts, what do we do next? We could distribute, all right? Again, this is just algebra, you guys, stuff that you just do all the time. If you were working on the denominator, totally fine. Again, if you see something, pause the video and go for it. Cosine times one is cosine. Cosine times negative sine is negative cosine sine. <laughs> cosine times one is cosine plus cosine times sine, which is cosine sine. All over. Uh, let's go ahead and multiply out this denominator as well. So this is foiling. So one times one is one. One times sine. One times negative sine. Negative sine times sine. All right, let's simplify. What can cancel? I have a negative cosine sine and a positive cosine sine. Gone. Cancel each other out. I have a positive sign and a negative sign. Something subtracting by itself is zero. So now I have cos plus cos over one minus sine squared. Oh, 
What was the trick? What's that equal to? Go. One minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. Can we combine these? Like if I made these x's, what is x plus x, you guys? Do not say x squared. That's x times x. What's x plus x? 2x. So what's cos plus cos? 2 cos. Again there. What's next? Cancel. What do we have? 2 over cosine. Hmm. What if this was 1 over cosine? What would that be equal to? Secant. So if 1 over cosine is equal to secant, what's 2 over cosine? 2 secant. And that does count as a single term. Cool. So that was for you. Now let's get into the new stuff. Okay, guys. So today's lesson is actually basically the same thing that we just did in 5.7. The only difference is, so it'd be like me giving you this. The only difference is you have the answer. You know what you're going towards. You know what you should be getting. Okay. Um, now the thing here, these are true statements, first of all, okay? So these are true. You are proving them true with substitution and algebra. Um, so these are identities that you're proving true. Because you're proving them true, you cannot work with both sides of the equation. So you guys can't like, oh, I'm gonna subtract this over here and work away, or I'm gonna cross multiply. No, you need to pick one side, either the left or the right, it doesn't matter. Um, basically I would pick the side that has more going on, pick the side, and then you cannot do anything to the other side at all. So you need to chop it off. That's your answer. That's what you, the goal is that you're trying to get to. Okay. All right. Here we go. So let's try number one. Let's focus. I'm going to choose to work with the left-hand side because there seems to me a lot more going on than on the right. Um, so again, chop this off. Do not work with this left-hand side or this right-hand side. You can only work with the left and I'm trying to make it look like this. Okay. All right. So if you want to try this on your own, go ahead. But if you want to do one together, totally fine. Pause the video at any time. Um, and also please remember that there's so many different ways for you guys to do this. Like, automatically people are going to go in and substitute there. That's going to be their first step for me. My first step was going to be to distribute. Both are totally fine. There is no wrong here. So this is cosine times secant minus cosine times cosine. I'm going to substitute secant with one over cosine and cos times cos is cos squared. This becomes put it over one, cos over cos, and that's just equal to one. And then this is minus cosine squared. This should look familiar. It's a Pythagorean identity. What's one minus cosine squared equal to? Sine squared. And does sine squared equal sine squared? Yes. So that's how you guys should write it. And I just proved that the left was equal to the right. So if you guys stopped here and you guys wrote equal sine squared, no, I need to see this. Verify. I'm not going to assume that you know that this is this, okay? All right. Um, moving on. Cool. 
Since I thoroughly went through the warm up and I in detail went over 5.7, that's why I'm going a little faster and I'm not like pointing out to you guys on my cheat sheet. The more that you guys work with these, you're going to start to memorize them anyway. Okay. So if you need to just go back and watch 5.7. All right, doing this again. Again, you can only work with one side. I'm going to choose to work at the left. Shop. Um, there's so many different ways to do this. You guys can go in and start replacing. Tan squared is sine squared over cosine squared. Secant squared is one over cosine squared. Two fractions combine. Top equals bottom. That's actually a negative. Cancel negative one equals negative one. You can do it like that, or this actually right here is a manipulated Pythagorean identity. Where are you? Right here. If I subtract um, secant squared to both sides and then subtract one to both sides, boom, it's a Pythagorean identity. So that's not really a good one. <laughs> Let's jump to number four, because number three is honestly kind of the same way. Let's do number four. Again, if you wanna, if you're feeling comfortable, go ahead and pause the video, try this on your own. You can only work with one side though. I'm gonna choose the left. Um, order doesn't matter, however you guys see this. Um, first thing I'm seeing is two, I'm gonna make them fractions, two fractions being added, so I need a least common denominator. So that means I'm going to multiply top and bottom by secant plus one. Okay, now I can add the two fractions together. This one's actually a pretty, um, well, you can do this in two ways. So way number one is you can take tan squared and replace it with secant squared minus one. Or this is kind of like a weird little trick. This is tan squared plus one. What does tan squared plus one equal? Secant squared. So there's so many different ways that you guys can do this. So I'm gonna do that one, secant squared plus secant over secant plus one. This goes back to 5.7. What should we do here? I have something squared and something not squared. This has a GCF. Pull out a secant and I'm left with secant plus one over secant plus one. What can we do? Cancel. What's left? Secant. All right, so there's really no difference. Um, it's the same as 5.7. We're just given the answer. That is it. That's all. Okay. All right, um, let's do three more. And again, you can try them on your own first. No big deal. Um, they do kind of get a bit tricky. I'm going to work with the left again. This is a really good trick right now. I mean, you're welcome to pause this and try it on your own, but um, I really want to show you this trick so that in the future when you come up with, when you see something like this, you I gave you the trick and I will be able to trick you on the test because I'm giving it to you right now, okay? So when you guys have this kind of a thing happening, it would be really, really nice if this was one minus sine squared, right? Because what is one minus sine squared equal? Cosine squared. And do you see where you can go from there? Cosine over cosine squared, cancel, boom, you're golden. But this isn't one minus sine squared, it's one minus sine. But here's the trick. We're gonna make this one minus sine squared. How do you do that? Well, if I multiply this, by one plus sine, and then I multiply these two together using FOIL, 
I get one minus sine squared. How cool was that? But the only way to make this legal is if I multiplied the bottom by one plus sine, I also have to multiply the top. So there's your trick. Critical thinking skills, I told you. All right, what's one minus sine squared equal to? Cosine squared. I gotta tell you guys, I'm really bummed that I'm not teaching this like in person because I love teaching this in person and just walking around to all the tables and helping you guys and seeing those light bulbs go off and we just feel like little problem solvers and it's just, it's really amazing the atmosphere that happens. Okay, next. Um, this cosine can cancel with one of these cosines because it's being multiplied. That's why that's legal. So this is one plus sine over cosine. Now, I'm looking for two separate things, right? I currently have one thing, but can I split a fraction? Well, if I can add two fractions, why can't I do that in reverse, right? So let's split this fraction. It's gonna be one over cos plus sine over cos. Each of those is being divided by cosine. What is one over cos equal? Secant. And what is sine over cosine equal? Tangent. And what did we get? Boom. So I know that this was probably complicated and your minds might be blown right now, but you have now seen it. So if something like this similar comes up again, you're gonna have those tools to do this problem. No problem. All right. Okay. Let's do, let's do one more. Cause these are pretty exhausting. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. So, uh, number eight is actually kind of similar to the first trick I showed you in number six. So see how I have one minus sign and up here I had one minus sign. What did we do? We multiplied by what we call the conjugate to get one minus sine squared. So let's do that again. I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by one plus sine because when I multiply these two together using FOIL, I get one minus sine squared. And guess what guys? That's the denominator that we're looking for. So I don't even need to change this into cosine squared because that's the same, that's what I wanted. Boom. But now let's work on the top. What should we do here? I have two binomials being multiplied. Let's FOIL again. Sine times one, sine times sine, one times one, and one times sine all over one minus sine squared. Let's try and rearrange this and maybe combine like terms and maybe we'll get something that we see here. So let's put the sine squared first. What's sine plus sine? Two sine. I don't know why, that always sounds like a rapper to me. <laughs> Whenever I see two sine. <laughs> plus one over one minus sine squared. Did we get the same thing? Yes. We did, so we verified. We verified. So it, it really just takes practice, guys, and I encourage you to please pause during these videos, try them out, do the homework problems, and I will be posting extra practice as well. So your homework tonight is RSG 5.8. Numbers five through eight, and this is on pages 10 and 11 in your packet. Now, if you would like a little bit more practice, this is not required of you and will not be graded for extra credit or anything, but if you want some extra practice because there's gonna be the key for the full thing on Google Classroom, do the whole homework and also do nine through 13. 
So five through 13 are practice on problems like this, verifying identities. You're only required to do four problems, but if you want, you can do more. Okay. Have a good day, guys.